you say? Gee, I'm having this trouble here. What'd you say? Well, should I introduce myself? Yes. Um, I am uh, Abba Rubin. Oh, my name is Ann Madison. Uh, I'm 71, hard of hearing. Yes, you want to know about my uh, level of hearing loss and when I first noticed it. So uh, I would say I probably noticed it three, four years ago, something like that. Uh, I, we had a microwave like everybody else and my microwave gradually quit beeping. Um, uh, so, um, and what had happened was, uh, I had begun to lose my hearing and that particular pitch that the microwave beeped at, I couldn't hear anymore. Uh, so that was my first inkling that, uh, my hearing was, I was losing my hearing. It was a gradual recognition of the problem. What it felt like was, it was a sort of a dawning awareness that something was not right. Uh, and then it became a source of frustration. Uh, I noticed that in groups, I was missing uh, a lot. And I would always ask my wife, what, what do you say? What'd she say? I miss out on conversations. Uh, I, I don't hear what people are saying. I get people to repeat all the time. I think hearing is an extremely important uh, Vitally important function and uh, I cannot imagine anything more important than seeing and hearing. Hearing is important because it is the communication between people. Uh, a certain independence uh, and an ability to do what I, what I please, what I want to do and people are by nature gregarious, so that uh, the only way that we communicate fully is through sound. And when I don't have uh, uh, hearing, uh, I, I can't do that. I get stuck. Well, what I understand the progression of hearing loss with aging is that the hairs, the small hairs, cells in your ear, they uh, break or diminish and uh, cease to function. Cease to renew themselves, I guess, as other cells in our bodies don't renew as well as we get older. So uh, it is um, um, something that just happens. Hearing loss is really, really common as we age. We literally see by the time we get to adults who are 70 and above, two thirds of everyone over 70 has a hearing loss. My name is Frank Lin. I'm a professor of otolaryngology at Johns Hopkins, where I also direct a public health research center focused on understanding and addressing the impact of hearing loss on older adults. When we talk about being able to hear, uh, hearing really occurs in actually two steps. The first step is the inner ear, what we call the cochlea, has to take in all those different vibrations in the air and then convert those vibrations with really good accuracy into a neural code or a neural signal that goes to the brain. And the second step then is the brain that has to decode the signals. Now, when we develop what we call quote unquote hearing loss as we get older, the reason why that happens is that the cells in the inner ear, they're all what we call post-mitotic, which is a fancy word of saying they can't regenerate. So over a lifetime, as we lose some of those cells in the inner ear from damage from noise exposure, just getting older, it basically means the ear can no longer send sounds as clearly to the brain as it used to. But you know what research has really now shown over the last 10, 15 years now is that hearing loss is incredibly important. It's the, it's the most important, the most dominant risk factor for dementia, for instance. But unfortunately for a lot of seniors like, like Abba and, and Ann, it can seem like it just creeps up on you. You don't even realize you have it. You don't know what to do about it. It's great though that we're reaching a turning point. It's at the point now with technology, you can self monitor your own hearing. If you get a smartphone, you can monitor and measure your hearing number, which is a way to track your hearing over your lifetime, much like you might track your blood pressure or if you have diabetes or blood sugar, you can track your hearing now over your lifetime really, really easily. 
because you have that number then in the future, you can actually act on it. A big thing that's changing now in the future is over-the-counter hearing aids. So if you know your hearing number, you can actually act on it. It doesn't have to be something you just wait to see a doctor to see. You have to wait to get your hearing checked. You can do a lot of yourself nowadays, which all of a sudden makes hearing this thing that's sort of invisible, that you don't think is really that important, is something you can actually act on throughout your lifetime. Um, and I know uh, that one thing is for sure, I wish I had pushed my doctor more about getting a hearing test. I might have had a hearing aid at that point. It would have been better. It would have been better if this had been caught early and I could have done what I did. Uh, if there are uh, people who are experiencing a diminution in their hearing, I would just say that we might as well be optimistic about the circumstances of our lives and enjoy all the good things that we have and the hearing that remains to us, which is often considerable, and uh, deal with the uh, problem as a serious annoyance. Just a, a low level of irritation. But one that we can handle and get past and concentrate on all the good things that we still enjoy and have and will have.